Hello, Wally Wood here with the Revelation File Report. Thank you for joining us each time. I pray that you have been with us through the entire series of programs, over 30 of them now. And we started a, a subject a few weeks ago, uh, a few programs ago, on prophetic evangelism. And if you've not picked up on any of that, let me just explain to you real quick. We've been talking about, of course, as you know, end times the shape and direction of the world in these last days. We're attempting to give some answers to a lot of questions that are coming forth because of the times we're living in. And I wanted to try and clarify what's really happening both on the world side and on the church side. There seems to be a lot of confusion even within the church as to what is really going on, depending on who you talk to, uh, their position doctrinally, things of this nature. And we tend to forget basic Bible doctrine that we should all know and should be right there at the front of our minds when we see things like uh, what's going on that is happening right now. Uh, Jesus said, do not be dismayed. Don't be surprised. Don't be caught off guard. Uh, don't allow yourself to be fearful in times that were prophesied. And he prophesied them for the very purpose of us knowing what to expect, especially as we see those days coming, as he said in, this, in, in his word. So I want to continue along that same vein, but we're going to approach it from a different perspective. Um, I have a friend that goes with us to encourage a church named uh, Cindy Schroppel, and she has written a book. I'm calling it a new book uh, because it's now undergone, I guess, two revisions at this point. One. one. one um, called Scandalin. And it's a novel, of all things, and it takes you into the world of the spirits, the other side, both angels and demons, and focuses them, places them in the environment of your daily life as a human being. And it attempts to kind of give you a better, deeper understanding so that you, the individual, can better align yourself with which of these spirits are you going to walk with and agree with. Um, it kind of gives you an inside straight of the spirit world that's going on all around you that uh, we're not accustomed to thinking in terms of because all of our attention is caught up here on this earth in the here and now. And uh, Cindy is my guest today. I've, I've got two copies of her book. One is well read. <laughs> <laughs> and this next one is the revised edition. And we're going to be talking about this a little bit. Uh, and it's available now in bookstores, right? It's available on Amazon now. Since I've done the revision, it's available in Amazon. You can order it off of my website, or you can order it off of Amazon. OK. Um, I want to enter into this interview with a little clip from her book. Uh, I've got several clips marked. <laughs> uh, you know that a book is good when you've got earmarked and lined and colored and things like this. Uh, <clears throat> being that it's a novel, I want to take you into a particular scene to set the stage for our talk today. Uh, this is on page 217 of her book. Uh, the Club Rendezvous was a popular Houston night spot for those looking to hook up with a partner for the night, ease their loneliness, fulfill their lustful cravings, peddle or purchase drugs, as well as many other unsavory and unspeakable behaviors. It was dark and murky and infested with demonic activity, beknownst to the humans, or unbeknownst to the humans, who came to have a good time and an innocent night of fun. These unsuspecting guests were blinded to the fact that nothing good happens in dark places. Good line. The spirits that claimed rendezvous as their territory were well within their spiritual rights to latch onto and influence those who enter into their habitat. They reveled in the darkness, lurking in every corner and crevice of the club, exciting passions, desires, and totally unethical and unlawful behavior in those who dared penetrate their lair. Any angelic beings who were daring enough to enter were restricted to stand in the shadows and watch helplessly as demons strategically hooked their charges like hungry fish lured by tasty bait. 
Those they were uh, called to guard were giving themselves over to darkness by their very entrance into the devil's own playground. The poor, ignorant mortals who came in rarely left the night spot untainted by the unseen chains wrapped tightly around their sin-stained souls. That puts in perspective what is going on all the time. And we seldom ever have a glimpse into the battle that takes place around us between good and evil. And I'm not saying that, that the, the devil is stronger than Jesus. Right. I am saying, however, that our wrestlings are not against flesh and blood, but against those powers and principalities and spirits of the unseen world in high places. And they never sleep. And G Paul told Timothy that the last days would be extremely perilous and that demonic activity was going to increase. The devil will have come down unto us full of anger because he knows that his time is short. So he, he's going to pull out all the stops and do all kinds of miraculous supernatural things that are very deceptive. Jesus said that those days would be so deceptive that if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. Books like The Scandalon uh, give us an inside glimpse into this other world that we're surrounded with. And I like the statement that you made here that, that the angels who were assigned to guard and guide these souls were kept back when their hosts chose to cross over these lines. These are things that we seldom ever hear talked about in the church today. Uh, tell us about the scandal. What's this, the story of in a quick nutshell? Okay. The story is of a young couple. Um, they're Christians. He is, the husband is a, a, a strong Christian. The wife is um, fairly strong, but they both go through a tragic situation, a tragic loss. And what you see is where, just like we see in the natural, where sometimes for some of us, a loss or a tragedy or something hard that we're walking through will just cause us to run to Christ, whereas others, they'll fall mm -hmm. from, from their walk. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> and so that's what happens in this book. And what the Lord wanted me to bring out is that <clears throat> we do live in this physical world, but there is a world that is much more real, much more tangible yes. even than this physical world that we see with our natural eyes, right. here with our natural ears can touch. And we basically... Uh, just as with the angels, we're the ones who determine what they do for us, essentially. We're the ones who determine, um, as far as the enemy is concerned, what he's allowed to do to us. Yes. We can open those doors to him, or we can keep those doors closed. We can keep our angelic uh, watchers or mm -hmm. the angels that, that, that keep us and watch over us. We can keep them active on our behalf mm -hmm. or we can hold them back to where basically they're just along for the ride so to speak and you know there's doctrine out there christian doctrine mm -hmm. that would contest you on what you just said uh do any scriptures come to your mind at this particular point because i know that you're a woman of the word and, and you you very craftily uh graft the word into the storytelling of this book without right. actually quoting scripture all the time mm -hmm. so you almost have to have a knowledge of the word to better appreciate mm -hmm. where you're coming from in the telling of the story uh what you just said do you do any scriptures come to your mind at that particular point that to support what you're saying here well the word does speak and i, I can't give you the exact sure. scripture reference right. but the word does speak about the fact that that angels are messengers okay. that are sent by god that's in hebrews by yes. his uh, word uh -huh. and so when we're speaking the word when we're praying the word when we're living the word uh -huh. we are activating in essence our angels so there's that criteria when yes. we're living the yes. word 
Right. Yes. We are activating that angelic realm. Okay. Um, just the opposite. When we're not speaking the word, when we're walking in sin, mm -hmm. we are opening up the door, so to speak, mm -hmm. for the enemy mm -hmm. to come in and wreak havoc in our lives. Now, that doesn't mean to say that the enemy cannot try to come against a believer who's walking the walk. Right. But we, we do battle with that. We do right. spiritual warfare. But for someone one, let's say who's been walking with the Lord for a few years and they're walking on the fence mm -hmm. you know they're mm -hmm. not um, they're not in the word right. they're not into fellowship with other believers they know God and and may even be saved right. but they don't have the knowledge right. of, that comes from the Word of God to be <laughs> able to walk in such a way where the enemy where they know how to battle the enemy and they right. know how to keep the enemy at bay from from their walk with mm -hmm. the Lord they know how to set their angels to flight to to do battle on their behalf if that makes any sense sure uh, they're not as strong in the spirit as they are in the soul exactly right and so the soul pretty much guides and directs their thinking processes mm -hmm. and their reactions to the things that go on around them, which is exactly what the enemy wants you to do. Exactly. He wants to divert your attention away from that which gives you your strength mm -hmm. and victory mm -hmm. over him. Uh, and again, we saw that in his case with Jesus, trying to divert his attention away from the core of the word. And Jesus always came back with the word mm -hmm. to defeat those attempts by the devil. And if the, if the servant is no greater than his master, then if it happened to the master, <clears throat> it's going to happen to us. Exactly. Now, when you speak in terms of spiritual warfare, and, and again, this book is a, a good blueprint of spiritual warfare on <laughs> Friday Night Live. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you saying? Because again, we've got viewers who don't necessarily always come from our side of the fence, and that's not demeaning in any way. Uh, we've got believers all over the world who's watching the show. But they are hungry and thirsting after the, the new terminologies that they hear us speak in terms of. Mm -hmm. They probably go to a church or a denomination that doesn't speak in terms or talk, uh, teach in terms of spiritual warfare as you and I understand it. So how would you define spiritual warfare in such a way that it appears to be relative to everybody's walk in life today? Well, you know, Wally, the word says that we war not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and, and the darkness. Yes. You know, so um, I think when we're doing spiritual warfare, we're fighting against a demonic realm that we cannot see with our natural eyes but mm -hmm. we know exists because the Word of God tells us it exists. Mm -hmm. I think that spiritual warfare can come in many shapes and sizes. Um, it could be just like the the woman in my story she's fallen so mm -hmm. to speak in mm -hmm. her walk mm -hmm. and so she she opens herself up by by speaking negatively, right? By emotions, um, emotions, right? right. Um, unforgiveness, which okay. is a huge thing, right? Fear, yeah. anger, bitterness, mm -hmm. and so all of those things are um, really—it's—it's it's the enemy influencing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. souls, right. right? And so if we do not know God to the measure that he has called us to be conquerors. He's called us to, um, because he is in us, mm -hmm. to do battle like mm -hmm. he does, mm -hmm. to, to speak against the enemy, to stand against the enemy. He tells right. us to stand against the enemy. Then we can be easily defeated in our walk with the Lord, but also in our life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we see people who battle sickness. And, and many times the sickness has come upon them because of either just speaking negatively in, in, over their own selves, over their own lives. You know, well, I'm right. just I'm just getting old. And, you know, when you get old, boy, yeah. you have pains yeah. all over the place. Well, you know what's going to happen? Right. That's an open door for the enemy to come in uh -huh. and say, you're right. right. Here's you some just pain. prophesied it. <laughs> Here's some yeah. pain. Yeah. And so we have to learn to um, line up with God. Mm -hmm. You know, to line up with Him. What His is so important 
for believers to know the Word of God. And I yes. know you know that and believe yes. it. It's so important not just to know the Word of God, like to read it, but to get it in you so yes. that when the enemy comes against you, you use the Word. That's how we come against him is with the Word of God. Yes and with the blood of Jesus. And we have a partnership in that. Exactly. It's the Holy Spirit. Exactly. That's his job, is to bring to our remembrance the things that were said. Exactly. So you don't even have to try to remember. Right. You don't even, ha you don't even have to memorize the word. Exactly. You know, Jesus said, take my cross upon you and learn of me. That's study me. Get to know me in your situation, in your problem, in your challenge. Know me in such a way that you know how I would respond to that. Which brings up the other subject that we're talking about here. <clears throat> reactions versus responses. Reaction comes from the soul. Mm -hmm. Response comes from the spirit. And we're talking about the difference between the one who is hungering, thirsting, mining in the word. So the word gets into them. So it becomes a, an effective tool used by the Holy Spirit in you to meet every wile of the devil that he throws out at you versus the believer who does not spend time in the word. And so the bulk of his life is spent walking in the direction of his own rationale, his own reasoning. And he has convinced himself that he's right, that he's good, and everything's cool. But the devil's smarter than he is. The devil's smarter than all of us. Mm -hmm. You know. Sorry to, to steal the show, folks, but in Colossians, the devil was rendered powerless at the cross. To be rendered powerless means that you are stripped of your power, a power that you had, but you no longer have because something took place at a certain time and moment that stripped you of that power. So the devil had his power before the cross. After the cross, he doesn't. The only power he has is deception. And what we give to him by way of falling into the trap of his deception. Mm -hmm. So when we speak in terms of the spiritual warfare, I've had Christians come back and say, but wait a minute, didn't Jesus get the victory for us? And yes, he did. Absolutely. He also made you more than a conqueror. Exactly. Well, if you're more than a conqueror, what are you? You're a ruler. What are you supposed to rule? Not flesh and blood. Ephesians 5 says, the powers and principalities of this world. This way you use the word, you partner yourself with the Holy Spirit, you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit as more of that word gets into you. Exactly. And again, the book brings this out beautifully because it shows the nitty gritty daily battle that this couple goes through mm -hmm. as a couple, as individuals. And what are you going to do when you are in this test? We do not see, as Cindy pointed out, we don't see that, that unseen world. So we don't get a sense of the battle that's really going on. And it's a battle between those forces and <clears throat> the confiscation of our minds. Who's going to win in our mindset? Are we going to end this day victoriously or as victims? And I think that what she's done here is geniusly taken the life of one couple and taken us through the intimacy of their daily lives. This is not a thin book. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take for you to write this thing? Nine months. Nine months. Nine months. I would start to finish. Really? Mm -hmm. Now, had you ever written a novel before? Never. That was really? my first one, and that was something that the Lord had um, asked me to do. I fought him up for about three months on whether or not I was actually going to do it. Uh -huh. And um, when I started, the Lord would basically, he showed me the very beginning of the story. He told me who the main character would be. He told me what the name of the, the book would be. And then as I would sit down to write, he told me to take three days a week from nine to five and write just like it were a job. And so when I would sit down, usually when I get up in the morning, I wouldn't know where I was going to begin you know, depending right. on where I left off in the story the right. day before. But he would either remind me of something from my life or something I had seen or heard, or he would just, you know, download something to me to to write. And so he led me through the whole story. Amazing. Yeah. But I wanted to say, too, Wally, because um, 
You said something a while ago that reminded me of this. I think one of the um, most important things and something that the Lord is really showing me lately is that you have to know the Father. You yes. have to know Him. Yes. And really and truly, there's, there's a... Um, there's a protection that comes just in knowing him, like you said, mm -hmm. knowing the word, but you don't have to have it all memorized. No. God can bring no. it up to you because you're in relationship yes. with him. And when you're in relationship with him, you hear the father's voice yes. and you know the father's heart. And we see that in the main character. His name is Michael. And um, he was raised in a Christian family. His father is a pastor. And you see the intimacy he has with the Heavenly Father. And you see his desire to um, walk with God in such a way that he does live a victorious life. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I think that's really important. His wife, Zoe, on the other hand, was not raised in a Christian family. And she does not have that background that he had. And so... And we see that in many couples. We yes, see that in many absolutely. people, the differences. <clears throat> and so when a bad season comes, when the storm comes, it mm -hmm. was easy for her to fall away. Right. And so I think it's so important for us, and especially, like you said, in relation to the times that we're living in, yeah. I think it's so important for us to go deeper yes. into that relationship with the Father, to understand His love for us and to grow in our love for Him. And this situation that arose in their lives, uh, Michael was not in this by himself anymore. Exactly. Once he married Zoe, mm -hmm. okay, she became a new mission field mm -hmm. for him, mm -hmm. and it put forth challenges to him as a husband, yes, it did. as well as the spiritual leader of his household without uh, <laughs> bashing it over her head or anything mm -hmm. of this nature. How mm -hmm. do you win this soul that's suffering in a spirit of love and maintain a victory for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. um, we won't be a spoiler for the story, but I will tell you this. Um, myself and those that I know who've read the book can readily attest this is a fast reading book. You don't put it down. Uh, you don't want to take a break. You want to, it's like sitting in front of a real good TV show or a movie. You want to stay there to the end, <laughs> you know? And uh, so what do you want people to come away with having read this book? Other than just what we've said here, okay. what's the what's the secret that you want everybody to gain mm -hmm. in this that they didn't have coming into the book? I think that that not only my heart but God's heart in it, what He had showed me. And um, the name Scandalon, by the way, means trap, stick, or snare in in the Greek. And so say that again slowly. Trap, trap, stick. Or, yes, or snare. And so it's very easy for us if we're not in relationship with God yeah. to be ensnared by mm -hmm. the enemy. The, book, the Bible talks about being ensnared by the enemy. And um, I think what the Lord really wanted this book to be about was for us to see that that we can, even if we think we're strong, we can become ensnared through our own pride, through our own, you know, just, flesh period, yeah. Yes, right. flesh. Right. And and how we need to um, just stay strong in our walk so that we're not in that in that we don't find ourselves right. in that place. You know, we we all think that we would never fall. Right. But we don't know what tomorrow holds. And we don't know the nature of our own soul. Exactly. Exactly. God knows it better than we do. Exactly. <clears throat> and that's why a lot of times that's why it takes him a lifetime mm -hmm. to bring someone out mm -hmm. in into the kingdom. Exactly. Okay? And they'll spend their entire lives heading to hell mm -hmm. for all eternity. Mm -hmm. But through the prayers of dedicated loving saints behind them He's honoring those prayers, and only God knows how to work through the intricacies yes. of the dynamics of the soul that he made it to be. Um, I am reminded, you know, we keep talking about a relationship with the Father. These, again, are terms that to the uninitiated believer, the uneducated believer, seem like bumper sticker theology. Just another terminology of a certain brand of Christian. And I'm reminded of something that Paul said in the book of Romans that really sticks it to you. That which is not of faith is sin. 
Mm -hmm. He goes beyond the typical traditional definition of sin, mm -hmm. of missing the mark, and he puts it right there where all of us are. Mm -hmm. When you stop talking, believing, thinking, acting in faith, you're in sin. Yes. And that's where the snares await us. Mm -hmm. And so what Cindy is really looking to do in this book is bring healing. An inner healing through an inner strengthening of a red, more readily identifying and seeing what's going on all around you to ensnare you or to save you and protect you so that you can come out of this book with a better appreciation for the need for a walking, living relationship with this God that you don't hear or see or anything of this nature, but who gave his life for you anyway. Um, where do you go from here? You said you've got a revised version of this. I have a revised version. I've also done a study guide okay. uh, on spiritual warfare oh, that good. goes along with the book. Okay. You, you use both of them. Okay. Um, and I'm currently working on another novel that is going to be, um, it's called The Lineage Curse. Okay. You're going to see how a curse can come on a person down through their lineage but of course, how God can redeem that and wow. and break that curse over a person's life. Because and see, these are things that people just aren't aware of. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And these are those invisible shackles mm -hmm. that ensnare us and trap us mm -hmm. that we need to be set free from. Uh, a movie is possibly being planned for the, the uh, for Scandalin, and uh, we will give more details on that as we get closer to it. But it seems to be in the works right now well it's something that's been prayed over and spoken into quite a bit and yeah. I am working with someone that you've uh -huh. connected me to and uh -huh. so we've been talking we're praying he's currently I told him I want him to read the book and uh -huh. and give me his feedback on that and we're talking about getting it made into a screenplay right. so yes and Praise I've had that prophesied over the book numerous times get your copy of the Scandalin okay I keep saying the Scandalin but Scandalin the book, Scandalin. <laughs> it's tremendous reading. It's very, very educational, instructive, uh, entertaining. And I think that you will really come away feeling that you've gained something by reading this novel. I want to thank you for tuning in. Thank Cindy for being my guest. We'll have her back again sometime soon. I'm Wally Wood, and we welcome you to another edition of The Revelation File in another upcoming episode. You have been watching the Revelation File Report with Wally Wood, a Wally Wood Ministries production from Houston, Texas. You are able to support the ministry by donating at wallywoodministries.com and by mail at Wally Wood Ministries, P.O. Box 42005, Houston, Texas 77242. Wally is available to present full two-hour forums in your city called the Revelation File News Forum. For more details, contact Andy Valdez at 713-560-3348 or by email at andy at andyvalidez.com. The Revelation File News Report is a weekly update of global trends in the news as it aligns with end-time Bible prophecy. Tune in again next time, and be sure to like and share this channel.